Hello Bridgewater College students. Today we're going to practice that which you previously learned about using the model of fraction blocks as we work with fractions. We're going to practice equivalence, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And in each case I'm going to present you with a problem and then suggest that you hit the pause button and see if you can do it yourself with pattern blocks. If you don't have real pattern blocks with you, that's okay. You could use a homemade model. But the idea is I want you to be able to model these operations with fractions using pattern blocks. So here's the first one we want to try. Find a quantity equivalent to 1 and 1 third. Hit the pause button and see if you can do this yourself with pattern blocks. Here's what I'm hoping you did. You said one and one third. That means one of the yellow hexagons and one of the blue rhombuses. That's one and one third. To find a quantity equivalent to that, well, there are many correct answers. You might have said to yourself, well, I could, I could replace the yellow hexagon with three of these uh, rhombuses. Having done so, I can say that the answer must be four thirds. And I'll just drag one more up and see if I can't spin it around and make it fit in there too. Let's see if we can fit it in the shape. Not too bad. So, one equivalent quantity would be four thirds. There are other correct answers to this. Let me delete what I just did. Let's find another quantity equivalent to one and one third. What if I chose to use triangles? Well, I could put two triangles in the blue, and remember we could put six in the yellow hexagon, and each of the triangles is considered to be one sixth. So I would have six, seven, eight. Eight six would be the same as one and one third. You don't have to do it with, with pattern blocks. You can do it paper and pencil if you want to. See if you agree that eight sixth is equivalent to one and one third. Hopefully you're going to agree on that one. Okay, let's try an addition problem. And again, what we're going to do is to model the addition with pattern blocks, but I also want to add another little task. I want you to make sure you can create a word problem that matches this addition. And then I want you to model it with pattern blocks. So see if you can do so. Hit the pause button and hit the resume when you're ready. Okay, for a word problem, that might model one and one third plus one and five sixths. You might have something like this. You have one and one third yards of material of one type. You have one and five six yards of another type. How much material in all do you have? And to get the answer, let's model it with pattern blocks. Let's start with our one and one third. And of course addition just means to put two quantities together. Here's one, and let's put our five sixths. That would be one, two, three, four, five sixths. So now I have one and one third plus one and five sixths. And when we add, we simply take two quantities and put them together. So let's do that now. Well, I'm going to move them around just a little. I think I'll put my one fraction up here like this. I think I'll take this other one and I'll spin it upside down like this and put it over here. I'll put one beside it right there. I think I'll spin this one upside down and put it up there. So what I have is one, two, three, and one sixth. The answer must be three and one sixth. So how much material do you have in all if you have one and one thirds 
yards of one type and one and five sixths of another, you have three and one sixth in all. Okay, let's try a subtraction problem. And again, you're going to be asked to do two things. One is to create a word problem. And then secondly, see if you can model the subtraction using pattern blocks. Hit the pause button when you're ready to go and we'll start as soon as you hit resume. I think I'll use the comparison model for this subtraction problem. Lynn has walked one and one half miles. I have walked two thirds of a mile. How much more has she walked than I have? Or here's a takeaway example. I have one and one half gallons of milk in the refrigerator. I use two thirds of a gallon in a recipe. How much milk do I have left? You have to be careful with this one though. I didn't say I have one and one half gallons of milk in the refrigerator and then I use two thirds of it. No, I said I use two thirds of a gallon. It makes a big difference because we want to take one and one half gallons minus two thirds of a gallon. Let's do this with pattern blocks now and see how it works. Let's start with one and one half. We need to take away two thirds. That is, we need to take away two of the rhombus shapes. Well, you can see that if I were to put one there, one here, and, and let me spin it to where it, you can see a little bit better. Let's spin it around like this. If I were to take those pieces away, I think I, what you see I would be left with is the red piece would still be there and one more rhombus shape. So I would be left with the half and another one third. Let's do that now. Let me highlight this, take it away, and remember I said I'd be left with one of those. So what I'm now showing is the answer. So what does this make? Well, if I move it over to here, and especially if I were to move the triangles, you would see it takes two triangles to cover up the blue. It takes three triangles to cover up the red. So that's five triangles or five sixths is the answer. So the answer to this problem must be five sixths. Back to the milk problem then. If I started with a gallon and a half of milk, use two thirds of a gallon, then I've got five sixths of a gallon left. Or in the first example I gave you, if Lynn has walked a mile and a half and I've walked two thirds of a mile, then she's walked five sixths of a mile more than I have. Okay, now we're on to multiplication. And again, I'm going to ask you to read the problem and then hit the pause button and see if you can do it by yourself. See if you can create a word problem and see if you can model it with pattern blocks. Then hit resume when you're ready to go on. Here's a word problem I thought of for this. There's a city that has two and a half million people in it. Two thirds of them live below the poverty line. How many people live below the poverty line in this city? To do the multiplication, we're going to remember that we're, we will read the time symbol as of. So we want two thirds of two and a half. Remember when we did this with pattern blocks, start with the number on the right. Start with two and a half. We want to find two thirds of this amount. What we could do is simply find two thirds of each of the pieces. So what would two thirds of the first one look like? Well, that would be one third. Here would be another third. I'm going to spin it around to make it match up the way I want it to, maybe like this. So that's what two thirds of the first hole would look like. And if I were to do the same thing again, for the second one, I think you would see it would look exactly the same way. What would two thirds of this look like? Well, that would be one third of it. Let's turn it upside down. And now I've got two thirds of each of the pieces. 
two blues, two more blues, that's four blues, and two greens. That makes a total of two-thirds of my original. So let's put these off to the side and see what we have. One, two, here's a third one. I think I'll spin it. just so I can see a little bit better. But this represents one. Here's our other one third, and now we need the two triangles to go with it. Maybe I could put one there. And how about if I put the other one on top here? Let me get rid of my original two and a half. I'll just set it over here to the side. Because that, that was my original two and a half. This represents two thirds of that. And notice what we have is a whole and two more thirds. So the answer should be one and two thirds. So how many million people are living below the poverty line in this city? One and two thirds million. Okay, here's a problem that involves division. And again, I want us to create a word problem and then see if we can model it with pattern blocks. So hit the pause button, see if you can make up a word problem, and also see if you can model this with pattern blocks. When you resume, we'll look at it together. Okay, here's a word problem that I came up with. A pizza restaurant owner decides that because many people will buy pizza at his restaurant and then take some of it home with them, he decides to create a box that will hold half of the pizza. That way he doesn't have to waste a whole box when a person only wants to take home part of a pizza. So he has created a box that holds exactly half of a pizza. One night a customer came in, ordered several pizzas. And when he and his friends were finished, there was still one and two-thirds pizza left uneaten. How many of those boxes, those half a pizza boxes, must this restaurant owner provide to these people so that they can take home the pizza that they did not eat. Again, they've got one and two-thirds pizza left over, and his boxes hold half of a pizza. How many boxes do we need for them to take home the pizza? When we did this in class, what we said to ourselves was that the second number is... What we're looking at for division is how many of the second number does it take to make the first number? So let's start with the first number, one and two thirds. I think I'll, there's my one and one third. I think I'll spin this one around a little bit until it looks like this and put him up there. So what I have now is one and two thirds. And I'm asking, how many of these, how many halves, does it take to make this? Well, let's see if we can count. It would take one, two, three, and part of another one. One, turn it upside down is two, three, and part of the th third one. How much of the fourth one, that is? How, many, how, how much of the fourth one would it take? Do you see that it would take one third of the fourth box? In other words, he's going to need four boxes because it takes three and one third boxes to get one and two thirds pizza into it. The answer must be three and one third. We can always try it the traditional way. You'll get the same answer. This would be five thirds times two over one that's going to be 10 thirds or three and one third. To summarize what we've done today is we've reviewed how pattern blocks can be used for equivalence, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions. I hope you'll continue to use models like pattern blocks or maybe the rectangle models when you teach fractions in school. It's important for students to be able to visualize those operations which we ask them to do on paper and pencil. Good luck.